Welcome back to Keeping It Real. We hope you had a great couple months since we last saw you. I know we did. Actually, we haven't seen each other before taping. What have you been up to? Well, for Christmas, I got a trip to Mongolia. Jealous? What for? Falcon training. What did you get? Uh, Easy Bake Oven. What? Really? Look, I wanted lessons from Bobby Flay, but they were out of reach. Financially. I'm sorry, man. I'm sure you make some killer cakes, though. That's where you're wrong. I can't make cakes. I make kick-ass roasted marrow bones. Well, that sounds disgusting. It is. The food snobs love it. No. Well, I get to bring my trained falcon back to the States. I entered my recipe in a cooking competition. I asked to bring my falcon to New York Zoo to show it off my skills. But I got an all-expenses-paid trip to Vegas to have a cook-off with Bobby Flay. Yeah, well, I was blindfolded, strapped to a toilet, and left in the middle of the woods. But I escaped by calling my falcon. Do I want to know how that happened? Probably not. All right, well, the point is I didn't make the cut. No? Why not, buddy? Honestly, I don't remember much. I was in Vegas. Something about a squirrel, though? Squirrels? You know, I have a confession to make. My falcon didn't help me when I was in the forest. It chased a squirrel and left me to gnaw my way back out of my binds. I could have been a Food Network star if it hadn't been for that damn squirrel. Goddamn filthy squirrels! I'm sorry, Mikey. If it makes you feel any better, I didn't get to win the zoo competition because my falcon never came back from chasing that squirrel. Those damn squirrels ruined our chance at fame. But we still have keeping it real. Uh, yeah, we do. You're right. Let's bring those people what they want. Semi-accurate information about movies. But Luke, while we're keeping it real, I have something to confess. What's that? In Vegas... <laughs> It's Oscar season, Luke, which can only mean one thing. It's Oscar season. That's right. There have been a lot of theories as to who's going to take home Oscar gold this year. There's a huge field to draw from, and honestly, neither Luke or I can confidently say who will secure a nomination. But we all know they'll be dead. This is true. Oh, it's almost time for the announcement, so we're going live to our new senior awards correspondent, um, Gimlet Rengle? Take it away, Germa? Germa. Nice. Thanks, Pickle Dicks. I'm here live at the Academy, and the enthusiasm is cheerfully morose. Never before have so many fans gathered to cheer on the dead. This year, the Academy will break down the in memoriam sequence into three categories. Best Death, Best Supporting Death, and Best Unexpected Death. It's always one of the more sentimental moments of the Oscar telecast, and movie buffs love to get their scorecards out and make predictions about which Hollywood death will go where. I'll tell you where they go. About six feet underground. <laughs> what? It's funny! Now, Erica, for some of those who may be new to the death Oscars, can you give us a quick run-through? Absolutely, Luke. The Best Supporting Death Award goes to the most lovable supporting actor, who passed in the previous year. When James Cromwell finally dies, he'll be dead. Obvi. Match. The best unexpected death goes to the person whose death was the least expected in 2011. Finally, the best death goes to the greatest person to perish. Er er Urkel? Um, <laughs> how will we know who wins each award? Well, Mikey, we'll just have to see who they pick. Oh! The nominees are about to be announced. Let's head over. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and good afternoon. My esteemed colleague Christopher and I will now read the nominations as selected by the members of the Academy of Motion Pictures and Sciences. That's enough from the anthropomorphic amphibian. Hmm. The first nominee for Best Supporting Death is for Marky Welsh, the basis of Weezer. They don't normally nominate musicians. Rockabye baby, Mr. Welsh. See you later, pal. The nominees for Best Unexpected Death are Macho Man Randy Savage. Do you know the Macho Macho Man? And we have Amy Whitehouse for Alcohol Withdrawal. What a firecracker she was trying to take me to rehab. I say, can't bring walking down. And <laughs> Andy Rooney for Old Age. Doing fine. Great. Um, the nominees for Best Death of 2012 are Elizabeth Taylor for Natural Causes. I once went to an auction with Taylor and Bond Alman. Put my feet up on the um, And finally we have Steve Jobs for Battling Cancer. Carmen, I keep walking over my lines. You leave rock. Leaping. 
Well, that about does it for me. Once again, I'm saddened that my career has led me to a show as mediocre as yours. But it's work on television, so I'll take it. This is Emma Rangel, reluctantly reporting live from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Pickle Dicks. Thanks, Lemon. Your presence on the show delights us all. As usual, the nominations are pretty safe and political. Mikey, let's talk surprises. Well, first of all, Andy Rooney got nominated for an unexpected death? That's ridiculous. The man was a dinosaur and had a 100% likely to die in 2011 rating from RottenCorpses.com. Peter Travers said of Rooney's death, While Andy didn't break any new ground with his passing, the fresh and unique way in which he expired elevated the formula above your typical Hollywood schlock. But Mikey, what I'm really interested in is Amy Winehouse's nomination. You don't think she deserved it? On the contrary, mi amigo. I love the nomination. Winehouse lived with reckless abandon. We all know that. She was expected to die. But the reason she was able to snab a BUD nom was because of how she died. That woman drank so much booze throughout her life that she would cry so she would get drunk on her own tears. When she tried to drop it cold turkey, her body literally shut down. She died because she tried to give up drinking. She's completely changed rock star death expectations. That's a very fair point, Luke. But as far as I'm concerned, I am so angry I could sneeze. As you know... I am a huge Ryan Dunn fan, and I am absolutely livid that he was not given a nomination. The man has been performing death-defying stunts for years, and he's barely 30. No one could have possibly seen this coming. I found his death to be a textbook example of an unexpected death. The fact that he's a jackass member is the very reason he was not given a nomination, you pickle dick. I'm surprised he hadn't already died of one too many bowling balls to the nuts. I think we need to take this one to the disagreement zone before I rip your cocktail-soaked olive head off of your insignificant little body. Disagreement zone! All right, gentlemen. I want a nice, clean debate. Keep the language to a minimum, and remember, physical contact is not only allowed, but encouraged. Lucas, your opening statement. Thank you, referee. I'll make this brief. Briefer than Ryan Dunn's final thought before his brain smashed through his windshield. Mikey, I have an equation for you that will prove Math. Ryan Dunn was expected to die. Oh, God. First, we have the speed at which Ryan Dunn's Porsche was traveling. We multiply that by his blood alcohol content. Raise all that to the fact that he was in three jackass movies. I can't believe I'm then here. Multiply that by his Porsche's safety rating. Oh, God. Then, divide that by his Kelly Blue Book value, times all that by his lack of fear, and we have a 96% He's a genius. chance that Ryan Dunn will die. I call that the Drunk Dunn Theorem of Expectation. Mikey, you're bored. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good, Luke. Some good points. But, uh, let's see... So, we all know that Ryan Dunn got eight hours of sleep the night before. Carrot that is before. And then if you underline subtract the fact that he had Paco's tacos for dinner, and then add the fact that Bam Margera was in his life, close friend, you get a two whopping percent that he was gonna survive. His death was unexpected. Your move. Debate over! Lucas wins! What? <laughs> oh, poor little Mikey. I win. Admirable effort, old friend. Well, now that we've settled that debate, let's move on to the big kahuna, the hot tamale. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, the best death category. An award truly to die for. Tell me, Luke, which deceased nominee's family is going to go home with the gold tonight? I think it's rather obvious, Mikey. Steve Jobs' contributions both to the entertainment industry and the world at large are undeniable, and he is absolutely going to secure the win, no questions asked. So you really think he's dead, huh? 
What do you mean, Mikey? Well, you little moron. If I were to tell you that Steve Jobs wasn't dead and that I could prove it, would you agree then that Ryan Dunn's death was actually unexpected and that you're just a little pickle dick moron? Pickle dick? You're the pickle dick, you pickle dick. I want to see where you're going with this, so I'll say yes. But because you're an idiot. <laughs> Tom, show Luke what time it is. You're not going to like working with this guy. Why? What's wrong with him? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm late. All right, all right, you got something for me to do? You got something you want us to do? We're doing something together? You got something you need me to do, right? I can't do this alone. You're not. His Aunt Debbie, a travel agent from Vermont. His Uncle Larry, who's a whaler in Finland. And then his cousin Jobs. And Jobs. This is going to be hard. Shut up to me. What happened to your nephew, Debbie? You might want to start with the Gates family and that prick Bill. He was always so rough with my boy, Ham. Ham Jobs. You want to take this one, Bob? Tell us what happened, you Nazi dirtbag! I, I haven't talked to my nephew in years, so I'm sorry I can't be able to help. Why did Funnel Cut turn their back on the professional market, you whore? So, Han, tell me, did you... Wait, you're Steve Jobs. No, I'm not. Would you like to buy an iPhone? I kind of would like to buy one. No, we don't want any of your China-manufactured garbage. How did you fake your own death? Soon, my empire will spread everywhere. It will traverse expanses of the entire globe. Ethiopia, iPhones. Darfur, iPads. I couldn't do that as a man. As a man, I'm flesh and blood. I could be ignored. I can be destroyed, but as a symbol, as a symbol, I can be incorruptible. I can be everlasting. That's crazy. No. You know what is crazy? The brand new features of the iPhone 4S.